Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com, <clears throat> and I'm here today to talk to you about radioactive rain that I've, uh, well, noticed and hopefully documented a little bit. Um, as you can see, I'm currently looking at my Geiger graph software. I've only, I only have a few counts on here, about 3,000 going across, so it's not enough to be uh, really good and accurate right this moment. Um, yesterday, I believe I may have detected a little tiny touch of radioactive rain although I'm not 100% sure of how many. Let me move over here. This, of course, is my Geiger counter, which is a CRM model. Uh, well, CRM 100 is the model. It's from International Medcom, and it's really just a Rat Alert 100 minus the alert feature, which I think is similar to the SE Systems or SE International Digital Alert. Oh, heck, they're all kind of the same product family. It, it, and this is a, a, from another company that, that is related to the company that makes the Inspector, the famous Inspector. But anyway, <clears throat> it's uh, f fully functional and capable of detecting, um, let's see here, alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray. And of course that's what I do with it. And it has a thin window, mic thin window mica, um, well, thin mica window detector with a model LND Geiger, uh, Geiger tube. Okay, and the software pumps over here to my systems where I graph months and months and months of it and put it up on my website for you. <clears throat> well, here's the website. I need to get some of that software that allows me to catch my uh, video on the screen and show it to you because that would look significantly better than um, what I'm currently showing you, which is, you know, not so good. Uh, if you go to, by the way, uh, let me get close up here so you can read it. If you go to anti-proton.com anti-proton.com. It's the main story right this moment. The story is radioactive rain, 3rd of July, 2010. Why doesn't this ever come into focus? Basically what it boils down to is I found what I think is perhaps radioactive rain. Example. Well, here, let me show you the better example because, you know, on my own computer I have the better data. All right. If you read these, um, Look at these readings really carefully here, and if you go to the website, you can follow along. Because obviously, this this video is not very good, but basically, we go up and down and up and down. And counts per oh no, sorry, counts per minute is the y-axis. Time is the uh, x-axis. We start at 5:10 p.m. in the third. Go to six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, almost four o'clock in the morning. During this period of time, uh, our counts per minute are uh, averaging around 15, give or take. Normally it's 14, by the way. The, all of yesterday, the um, uh, well, not all of yesterday, excuse me, halfway through the day, the readings started going up to 15. If you look at my statistical data, which I, of course, published on my website, you can see this for sure. Well, we have the random ups and downs like usual, but notice the start of the rain is right here. There is a dip. See the dip? That dip right there seems to happen during the start of all of my rain events. Oops. Whenever the rain starts, there's always a dip immediately. And my assumption, and these are assumptions, I don't have a scintillator or the, or the actual equipment required to know for sure. During, But this is what I assume based on the data, which in, and this is a reasonable assumption, I would believe. I would go so far as to say it's a reasonable one. For the period of several minutes, I get a dip in the radiation. And this is happening right around 8.38. 838, give or take. Let me, um, let me go to the data here. 838. Alrighty. And let's see here. 8, 8. And there we go. Notice I get a dip right here. For an entire three or four minutes, I drop from 14 counts a minute down to. 13, 14, 16, 7, 10, 6, 18, 15, 9. See, I shoot back up again. I get a dip right there. It's only a couple of minutes. It's only three or four minutes. But that dip seems to accompany the beginning of the videos. I know exactly when this happens, happened because I tried to shoot a video and was going to upload it to YouTube. And I have the timestamp from the video I tried to upload, which matched right when the storm happened because I was standing in the storm when it happened, which is why I didn't upload that video to YouTube because, well, I got blasted by rain, which sucked. But anyhow, it did at least give me a good timestamp for when this occurred, and they coincided. My assumption is that that rain is uh, washing whatever it is in the air out of the air, at least momentarily. All right. 
Now, immediately the rain picks up and moves across here. Now look closely. Notice how there's a curvature up and then down. See? The average goes up and down during this period of rain. And if you go to the website, you can see this in detail, downloaded, including the actual data to look at. So this is not a matter of me just kind of showing you this and saying, I think I see a curve. You can look at the data yourself, run every mathematical calculation you'd like off of it. I did nothing more than a standard deviation. I um, added up all of these guys, took their average, subtracted the uh, each one from the average, uh, uh, squaring it, summed all of those, divided it by the number that were inside of here, square rooted it, then took the um, number for each and every single one of these and subtracted it from there and also subtracted the um, uh, standard deviation to produce the next graph I'm about to show you. But basically, here are some smaller showers that picked up too at the same basic shape, but the only difference is they don't have the dip. I've noticed sub uh, subsequent showers do not have the dip in them. By the way, you can look at my own data and see this for yourself for other days. I also had a random spike, which was kind of interesting, which is like, what is it, four standard deviations from the norm? A spike up to 32 counts. <laughs> That's not important, though, because it was for only for one minute. And then, of course, spikes in radiation are not indicative of anything, usually. Although I can fantasize and, and think to myself, perhaps it was a gamma ray burst. But the reality is it probably was nothing more than just random happenstance, a spike. Now, looking at this data, the, these, are, these are deviations right here from the, uh, from the variance. Well, rather, these are variance from the norm. So this is kind of like a map of the variance as opposed to a map of the actual data. And as you notice, we kind of go up and we kind of go down. But if you look carefully, right around the time of the start of the rain, there's a thicker groupage of going down. These are negative uh, uh, drops where we drop below the norm. Several standard deviations, in fact. And as you can see, when we drop below the norm, what we're doing, you can't see the times in here. This Mac graphing software is terrible. This is apparently everything washing out of the, out of the um, atmosphere. That's my guess. Then it builds up. And you notice we have these higher spikes. Overall, you get uh, groups of higher spikes during the rain. And then you go back down to lower again. And then you have the second rainfall. And then you go back to lower again. And as you can see, this has a period with an ever-compressing frequency. Of course, the frequency is because we have two sets of rainstorms. But it, once you do it this way, you can actually see where the data, where it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down, then it goes up, then it goes down. And you see the, the variances here, the, the, the groupages of variances are dramatically more separated before and afterwards. But right here, they're very thick. I mean, you can't explain this away as easily when it has this right afterwards, followed by, of course, some of the very high spikes in between. Well, you can explain it, but I'm several standard deviations from the norm at the at this point. Not something I would expect to just see. So, call it what you like, I guess. If you go to the website and you look at the actual um, data that I put up there, it's under the radioactive rain for the 3rd of July. Um, I have a link to um, the data that I used in raw format, which you can read if you so choose. I also have a link right here to June 1st through 15th and June 16th through the 30th. That's basically a month. Let's load some of this. An entire month of data of just con all nearly continuous, as much continu uh, as, as continuous as I can be, data uh, showing the radiation. So it's not a matter of me just taking my Geiger counter and walking outside and rubbing, you know, a towel on my car and saying to you folks, oh, look, it's going up and down. I know my readings are much less than a lot of other people, but my readings are very, very much backed up by a lot of data. And I present the data to you so that you can read it yourself. If you see a flaw in what I'm doing, please tell me. But I don't see a flaw in what I'm doing. And I don't see anything dangerous either. I'm not saying more than double background. So this is not particularly dangerous. But it is interesting and observable, and I don't know that it comes from Fukushima, by the way. There are many other possible sources that this could be coming from. So, who knows. After this, I think I'm going to go outside and sh sh throw off a little bit of my crappy fireworks that I bought these little snappers here and some of these little stupid things that shoot up in the air. These are really terrible, but unfortunately in my state, everything is illegal. Like, everything is illegal in the state. So I can't have anything that shoots in the air. If I want it to shoot in the air, I have to just throw it with my own two hands. Crappy. Anyway, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and um, have fun.